Hey guys, this is Justin at the Survivor Review, and today I'm going to be talking about one of the most unique and different comic book movies ever made, Joker. I don't really know where to begin with this review, there's just so much, there was so much to process with the movie and just so much going through my mind. I, I guess I'll just start with just, I loved it. I, I thought this movie was fantastic, I thought it was great, it was unnerving, it was, ah. Uh, it was so good. It was so well done. Joaquin Phoenix delivers one of the best performances I've seen in a long time. His performance is incredible. There's just so many great things about this movie. I guess I'll just kind of start with, I was I was actually kind of concerned going into this because I wasn't sure if this movie would really work. Like, when, when it was first announced, I, my thoughts was kind of like what most people were, like, why? What's the point of this movie? Do you really need a full movie based on the Joker's origin. Like, I get it, it's a standalone movie not meant to tie into any universe or anything, but still, do we need this kind of movie? And my initial thought was no. But then, you know, like, more stuff started coming out for it, and it started to look really interesting. Like, I was interested to see Joaquin Phoenix's take on the character and everything. My one concern, though, was uh, the director, Todd Phillips, who is mainly known for comedies. And I'm like, they're saying this movie is meant to be like a 70s crime drama in the vein of a Scorsese movie. Do you think The Hangover Guy is the best choice? So I was always like cautious. I was always cautiously optimistic. And like, I'm glad to say like, I'm, I'm sorry Todd Phillips because he did an amazing job with this movie. This movie's beautifully directed. It looks gorgeous. The cinematography is amazing. It's a wonderfully great looking movie. It just captures that gritty tone of like 70s New York, even though it takes place in the early 80s and of course takes place in Gotham City, but it still captures that grit of that era. This is a super realistic, very uncomfortable movie. Like the funniest thing was like on the way home from this movie, like I was talking with my girlfriend about it and she was like, oh, there's this, this one part where I was just so uncomfortable. And I'm just like, the whole movie? And she was like, well, yeah, true, because it's a very unnerving movie. It's not meant for everybody. This, I can easily see a lot of people not liking this film just because it makes you uncomfortable. It just kind of makes you, like, question, like, morality and question, like, how people are treated and everything. It, it goes through a lot of stuff. I'm not going to try to describe the plot because everyone pretty much figured it out going in and everyone's probably seen the movie also, so there's no need to discuss that. Just delve right into the film and yeah, this movie doesn't feel like a comic book film at all. It literally just feels like a gritty 70s uh, character drama because this movie essentially is a character study of Arthur Fleck and his slow descent into madness and by the end of the movie becoming Joker. And it's done so well. You can clearly see the inspiration from Taxi Driver and there's a lot of stuff directly lifted from that movie and that was actually one of my kind of worries at first because like I said there's a lot of stuff kind of lifted from it in the first half of the movie to where I was like, oh, am, am I just going to be reminded of Taxi Driver like throughout this whole thing? Like I want to be engrossed in the story, not reminded of another great film. But once you get to the subway scene, that's when the movie really becomes its own and just tells its own story with its own kind of themes and messages. And then from that point on, I wasn't really thinking about Taxi Driver at all, despite the fact that it does have that kind of griminess of it. Like the way this movie portrays Gotham City, I loved. It just, it feels so real and lived in and it feels like the Gotham City we all know and love with this is kind of like crime riddled city. I mean, no offense to the Nolan movies, but once you got to like Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises and they were just using like Chicago and Pittsburgh for it, it was just like a normal city. You never got that feeling that it was this terrible crime ridden place that you would not want to live in. It just kind of felt like a normal city. And I'm not trying to take down those movies. I love those movies. But this one just had this really great feel to it. I just, I love the portrayal of Gotham City in here. It was handled so well. I kind of movie really doesn't feel the need to adhere to the comics. Like it basically just, you know, it's doing its own thing with this character and that made it so much more like engaging because you're not, you're one, you're not worried about how accurate it's going to be. And two, you're not looking for references. You're just able to just engross yourself in the story and not have to care about the larger universe. And I love that feeling. I love that kind of like just 
free feeling of just being able to watch the story play out and not worry about the comics and the ex universe and the characters tying in. And the way it handles like comic book elements, it does very well. It doesn't have a whole lot of those elements, but it does have the character of Thomas Wayne and it even has Bruce Wayne in there. But like the way it incorporates the Thomas Wayne character into the story, I thought was very natural and very well done. It didn't feel like, you know, fan service. It didn't feel like it was obviously trying to throw in like a reference to the comics. And the way they utilize them in the story, I thought was very good and very well handled. I will say like the immediate story like of Arthur Fleck and kind of what he's going through isn't the most unique story. Like there's a lot of stuff in there that we've seen before that aren't really like surprising like how his character is and everything. That being said, there are surprising moments. There's a lot of just like holy crap moments in this movie. So many just stuff that just comes out of nowhere. You're just like, Jesus, I did not expect that to happen. And a lot of times we were just sitting there. There's a lot of just uncomfortable moments. We were just kind of sitting there just like nervous for what's going to happen next. Just like on the end of your seat, just like, oh God, no. Like what's going to, oh, this is not going to end well. Like there's so many scenes like that. And I know a lot of people might not like that. I like that. <laughs> it made it just so much more engaging. Um, there's this... One scene kind of getting closer to the end with um, Arthur and his apartments and once that scene happened all the way to like the credits rolled I was like on the edge of my seat and I felt like my heart was like beating fast like the entire time like the last half of this movie like never let up and was so like Oh, it was, I don't really know how to describe it. I love the last half of this movie. To me, it's one of the best, like, third acts I've seen, like, recently in a film. And there was just so much good stuff in there. Like I said, like, I, I don't know what it was. My heart was just kind of, like, pounding during a lot of it. Just like, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I don't know how that's going to end up. It's just like... Oh, it was so well handled. The music in this movie is great. From the score, which is not this big, overblown score. It's very kind of smaller scale, more kind of subtle, but it's unnerving, and it just kind of builds. Like, as the movie progresses, the score kind of builds more and more, and gets more and more just kind of, like, just eerie and everything. It's, it's a beautiful score. I loved it. And then also its use of other, like, songs was great. The song they use when he fully becomes the Joker with the makeup and the costume and everything is a song that, like, if you would have told me that's what they use, like, beforehand, I would have been like, oh, what? Were they, like, making a joke out of the scene? But when you watch it in the movie, it's perfect. It's so good. There's just a lot of great use of music in the film. Like, those moments are some of the standout moments in the film, especially during the climax and everything. Like, that stuff is so good. Robert De Niro is in here, which it still amazes me that they got De Niro to do this movie. Even though I know, like, he's been doing a lot of crap lately, he still never did a comic book movie. So to see him in here was great. He has a small role. He, he only really has, like, two full scenes. But then, like, he appears sporadically on the TV because he plays this uh, talk show host who Arthur is a huge fan of. He watches him every night with his mom, and he would, you know, he, his dream is to be on that show with him. So he, so he has a presence throughout the movie. That's the thing. He doesn't have too many scenes, and yeah, I would have loved to see more of him because it's Robert De Niro. But I thought the way he was utilized was good because he had this, like, you can still feel his presence throughout the movie because you'd always cut back to, like, one of his shows, like, throughout the movie every once in a while. His, it seems near the end, Jesus Christ, just that whole ending is just insane, you know, and I guess I've, if I have one problem with the ending is that there's this one thing in there that I didn't feel it needed to do um, that kind of connects to like the larger, like I guess DC universe in a way that like, I don't know, I didn't feel it was totally necessary because this movie was kind of, you know, spending the whole time like being its own thing really with no real ties to anything and then I did that and I'm like okay but after like it happened and I was initially like oh well you didn't have to I thought about how that scene was executed and I really like how it was executed it wasn't executed like it was this big deal it was just kind of like this quick kind of blunt thing and it just added to the like the, gr the gritty like brutalness of this movie. So that's the thing like I know a lot of people are talking about like the violence in this movie and how violent it is and everything and like it, it is, I mean, it is pretty brutal. When you actually have the violent moments, it hits. But I think why people are saying it's so violent is because of how gritty and realistic the movie is. And that makes the violence, like, so much more brutal and so much, like, 
more disgusting. Yeah, the violence in this movie is similar to the violence in Taxi Driver, actually, where the movie, for the most part, is pretty mundane, pretty tame, and then it has a violent outburst. And when that happens, it's very brutal and, like, bloody, but the entire movie is not that. So I don't really, like, see the big complaints about the violence in the film. Like I said, when it's there, it is brutal, it is graphic, but it's not, like, it's used sparingly. It's not, like, a com completely violent movie where it's, like, violence every every five minutes, you know? And, like, I, I know there's a lot of controversy behind this movie with regards where it might inspire violent acts and everything, and, I mean, I understand that. I can see where it's coming from. But I feel like, like, the character of Arthur, you understand throughout the movie that he's not totally sane. Like, you have moments where you do sympathize with him. There's a lot of moments where there's, there's just people treating him like crap, you know? And so you do sympathize with him, but you do see, like, the darker side of him that you're just like, okay, I'm... I'm not okay with that. So I don't really believe in the whole, like, this movie inspiring violence, because I don't feel like the movie completely played him off as a hero. Because, yeah, he is the protagonist, which is weird to say that the character of the Joker is the protagonist in the movie, but like I said, they don't really play him off like a hero. They don't play him off like a good guy, you know? They do play him off as this, like, mentally unstable person that, you know, takes things to extreme levels. While being a very tonally different from a comic book-like movie, it still captures the spirit of the character, of the Joker character, like, to a T. And there's so many moments in this movie that are just pure Joker. And a lot of that is attributed to Joaquin Phoenix's performance, which, like I said, is just, it's mesmerizing. You know, he literally is in about every scene of this movie. I don't think there's a scene that he's not in. And every time, you're just so engaged with him. Like, his performance is just, is incredible. Honestly, after seeing this, DC needs to tackle more movies like this. You know, I know their cinematic universe has basically crumbled away at this point and is pretty non-existent, although they are trying to have some movies that tie together. I, at this point, I'm like, I'm not even concerned about that. I, do more movies like this. Do more unique, standalone films that set the set it apart in the genre that is, a, is such an overstuffed genre with a lot of similar type of movies. Now, but this one is such a standout from the crowd and you, they should try to give us more movies like this. Focus on this and less of like trying to make a big like universe type of thing, which like I said, no, they're not technically really doing anymore. But I really think they should not even be concerned with that stuff and make more unique films like this. So overall, that's Joker, an incredible film that deals with a lot of issues, which is why I think a lot of people are making a big deal out of it. It deals with a lot of social commentary, a lot of dealing with mental health and all that kind of stuff. It deals with a lot of stuff, and I think it deals with it very well, and it just makes for this effectively, like I said, unsettling brutal, uncomfortable, but somehow like, engaging and beautiful looking movie that I thought was fantastic. I really loved this movie. I thought it was great and probably one of my favorite films of the year. So that's all I have to say about that. And until next time, I'll talk to you guys later.